Remembrance Day was first observed in 1919 throughout the British Commonwealth. It was originally called Armistice Day to commemorate Armistice Agreement that ended the First World War on Monday, November 11, 1918, at 11am, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Every year on November 11th, Canadians pause in a moment of silence to honour and remember the men and women who have served and continue to serve Canada during times of war, conflict and peace. We remember more than 2,300,000 Canadians who have served throughout our nation's history. And more than 118,000 who made the ultimate sacrifice. The poppy is the symbol of Remembrance Day. Replica poppies are sold by the Royal Canadian Legion to provide assistance to veterans. You can make a donation to the poppy campaign outside the office. While serving in Belgium during the First World War, Canadian soldier, physician, and poet John McCree wrote what would be one of history's most famous wartime poems. Written in 1915 with the First World War still raging, McCree's 15-line poem in Flanders Fields is read by millions around Canada and the world each Remembrance Day. The poem also popularized the poppy as a symbol of sacrifice and remembrance. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark her place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing the fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take off our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep through poppies grow in Flanders fields. Like many cities and towns across Canada, Many men and women from St. Catharines in the Niagara region enlisted so that they, too, could serve Canada. Pictured here are members of the Lincoln and Welland Regiment in Northwest Europe during the Second World War. The Niagara region has a long military history of men and women who served Canada. Pictured here, Private John Lemley of 98 Lincoln and Welland Battalion at Camp Niagara during the First World War.
Hi everyone, my name is Harjit Sajjan, Minister of National Defence for Canada, and wanted to talk to you before you watch this great Veterans Week video. I know it's been a difficult eight months, and I really commend all of you for doing your part to stop the spread of COVID. Every effort you make, big or small, to stop this virus is helping our country get through this tough time. So thank you very much for all you do. Remembrance Day is a time to reflect on our history, to think about the values that our veterans fought to defend, and to remember those who sacrificed so much to make the world a better place. Each and every day, the people who serve in our Canadian Armed Forces are still working to keep you and all of Canada safe. They are the veterans of tomorrow, and Remembrance Day is a time to honour them as well. I hope that you enjoy learning about Canada's rich history through their experiences. Together, we will honour those serving today and remember those who served before them. So thank you for everything you do and a great special thank you to our veterans. I am proud to be one of several members of the Canadian Armed Forces who will talk with you today about the importance of remembering our veterans. As a member of the Canadian Armed Forces, I am part of a family, a family that honours those who came before us and a family that supports one another today. I remember the Carty brothers from St. John, New Brunswick. For these five brothers, duty was bred in their bones. Their father, Alfred, was a member of the number two construction battalion during the First World War. Rather than follow in their father's footsteps and join the army, and despite regulation restrictions in place for black people serving in the military, the five brothers took to the sky and became members of the Royal Canadian Air Force during the Second World War. The youngest of the brothers, Gerald, became one of the youngest commissioned officers of the Royal Canadian Air Force at the age of 19. That is just one example of members following in their parents' or grandparents' footsteps. I also remember the thousands of Canadians, like the Cardi brothers, who have fought to defend the country we love, to help make the world a better place. I am in the Canadian Armed Forces, and when I remember, I think of those who fought in Afghanistan. Of sailors who prevented drugs from entering our country. Of aviators who protected the North American airspace of members who gave medical care to people who had never seen a doctor before. Some members were injured while others lost their lives. Families lost a spouse, a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, a brother or a sister. And I remember because I hope that in the future, on this day, someone remembers me. We are the latest generation working to keep our country safe and free. You may even know someone who is part of the military family. Parents and grandparents of you or your friends who fought or continue to fight for our freedom. On Remembrance Day, we honor the stories of our veterans, from invigorating victories to demoralizing defeats. Not everybody earns a medal in wartime or makes it into the history books. But every last one of the 8 million sailors, soldiers and aviators who answered the call during the First World War, the 1.1 million Canadians who served in the Second World War, and the tens of thousands of Canadians who served in Korea, Afghanistan and in other missions around the world, has a powerful story to tell. Each of these stories share a common theme, determination. Determination to fight for freedom and for peace, despite the hardships and personal sacrifices required. Because that's what true heroes do. And they can be found in every generation. Heroes like Captain Nicola Goddard. She was only 26 when she gave her life in Afghanistan in 2006 to help create a better future for people of that country. She was the first female Canadian combat soldier killed in action. She died in a firefight as Taliban forces launched an assault on the city of Kandahar. It's thanks to people like Nicola that today we live in a strong, democratic country that guarantees our rights and freedoms. Their heroism is the reason Canadians enjoy a high standard of living and quality of life. It's also why Canada has been a leader in keeping the peace around the world. Canada has sent more than 100,000 forces members to participate in over 66 United Nations missions around the world. Whether it's abroad or on home soil, we can be counted on to keep Canadians and our country safe, just as our veterans did. And that's the link that ties today's military members to those who came before us. 
We are all part of Canadian family, and we are all in this together. No matter where we're needed, here at home or beyond our shores, dedicated Canadian Armed Forces members are ready to help. We remember that there are still wars ongoing. And people still need help. And that's why I remember. Remembrance Day is a time to honor and remember those who served. And those who served and did not come home.